Okay, welcome back. Um, now we will start with, our, with the second part of our day, with the lightning talks. Uh, lightning talks will mean that it is a four-minute talk, it's very short, and um, the people we, in we invited for the talks, they are very different. So we have people like PhD candidates, sometimes they are master students, they are researchers from our lab, and some of them are new. They are not so close to our network, and we invited them because we found them interesting, we discovered them, and we would like to, ex as we would like to extend our network, so we also have some guests here. And um, yeah, I hand over again to you, Kent, now, because okay. you would like to give a, give a short talk sure. about the Cities Without um, yep. issue from your perspective. Thank you. Okay, so when, <laughs> when I told everyone that, because we had a lot of people who wanted to speak, we decided just to do very short lightning talks. And lightning talks are very hard to do. It's much harder to do a four minute talk than a 20 or 30 minute talk. And uh, they said, okay, but you have to do the first one. So, <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, launch this, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'm very excited about this because it's a way of getting lots of, lots of ideas and information out into the world in a very concise way. Okay, so if you could start, start the... And by the way, they're all on auto timers. That's great. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So we live in an era of e extreme urbanization and accelerating climate change. We also live in an era of increasingly dysfunctional national governments. And it's clear to me that, that the, the real change will take place when local communities act and particularly when young people who will inherit this future are empowered to take action. I was so inspired that over the last week or so, millions of young people took to the streets. They're incredibly impatient with the lack of progress that's happening at the national level. So, if we start locally, uh, this is our backyard. This is Kendall Square. It's considered one of the great innovation districts on the planet, but it's not a functioning community. There's no grocery store or pharmacy, there's very little housing, and we have been thinking about how we can turn this innovation district into an innovation community. So these, these graphs here kind of show the performance. Very high density employment, high density, high diversity employment, extremely low density residential, even lower diversity when it comes to residential. It's only a few apartments for rich people, basically. And as a result, third places, cafes, restaurants, collapse at night because uh, nobody lives there. So MIT is now developing a 14-acre site just to the north of that video. And it's the last great opportunity to turn MIT into this innovation community. This is based on the MIT Transportation Survey. 4,000 people commute in and out to MIT and they generate roughly three tons of carbon per person per year, we calculate. Now, if everybody drove an electric vehicle, that goes down to 2.19. That's not a bad improvement. But as a thought experiment, we thought, what if everybody could actually live on that new site uh, and, and walk to, to work? So that reduces to 0.5 tons, a six-fold improvement. I guarantee there's no other way through technology to get a six-fold improvement in the environmental performance of that community. So we built a CityScope platform to model these communities, this one of Kendall Square, and we start by voxelating the city. So we basically divide it up into a three-dimensional grid. We can define the demographic profiles and the density and the activities of people is similar to what we use for computational fluid dynamics. And then the process of looking at scenarios is interactive. We can dynamically explore changes in land use and density and new mobility systems, et cetera. So the first thing we want to do is increase the density, but density without congestion, because communities oppose density because it often leads to traffic and parking problems. So here you can see us dynamically exploring changes in density and diversity and updating this radar plot in real time. Harmony without zoning, this is key. 
because market forces alone will not lead to a functioning community. So we're looking at algorithmic land use, for example. You might start with a base density. Luxury housing, corporate labs gives no increase. But we could map actually hundreds of incentives to increase development rights, to build different types of housing, workforce, elderly housing, family housing, et cetera. And this can all be dynamic, and they update as economic and social and technology changes occur to create a kind of civic homeostasis, like Norman said, looking backwards, in this case, looking backwards to where communities were vibrant, live, work, play, shop places. We also need to think about a future uh, with mobility but without cars. Michael Lynn will talk about this in a minute. There are many ways to do that, many mobility modes. This is a very lightweight Uber-like system that comes to you wherever you are, and we can begin to model these kinds of systems. So here you see the roads that are red because we've increased the density too much, but then we toggle on lightweight autonomous modes, the roads go green, we can increase the density and find that kind of civic homeostasis. Housing without rooms. Housing is a critical issue in many of these communities. Uh, in fact, Mayor Bloomberg of New York said affordable housing was necessary for young people in order to stay uh, economically and culturally competitive. So in this case, young woman wakes up in the morning, she fixes coffee, coffee in the room changes dynamically to a living room. So I think we need to get rid of two things in cities, dedicated parking spaces and bedrooms. Now we can, we can uh, begin to model some of this with city scopes. So in this case, we're mapping 300 square foot micro units to a Lego brick. And then over time, altogether, we can see the impact on this community. Density without zoning, order, order uh, without zoning, density without congestion, mobility without cars. And you can see the CO2 dropping, social performance increasing because you're creating a more vibrant community where people can exchange ideas and uh, leading to a high functioning innovation community. We think it's possible to get it to a 10x decrease in CO2 and a 10x increase in social performance. And we owe it to these children to find ways to empower them to address these challenges in their own local community. Thank you.